Welcome to another TLDR news video. In this one, we're going to explain the UK's latest budget, as presented by Rishi Sunak. Sunak may have only entered number 11 about a month ago, but he's already getting the opportunity to set out his economic plans in the budget. His budget covered a variety of topics, so in this video we're going to run you through some of the biggest points, while explaining what this tells us about the government and how it impacts you. Before we do though, let me just explain something quickly. I've said this a few times recently, but YouTube is currently demonetizing all of our coronavirus content, so to get around the issue, we'll be censoring the word in this video. If you want to hear more about it, we discussed it in the latest episode of the podcast, and the clip where we discussed demonetization is linked below. If you want to support us through this phase of demonetization, there's links to our Patreon, PayPal, and merch stores below. We really appreciate your support. So let's start with the Chancellor's opening remarks, where he focused on the current outbreak. It gives me great pleasure to call to deliver his budget statement, Mr. Chancellor of the Exchequer. Yeah! I want to get straight to the issue most on everyone's mind. What everyone needs to know is that we are doing everything we can to keep this country and our people healthy and financially secure. But let me also say, yes, this is the key challenge facing our country today, but it is not the only challenge. We have just had an election where people voted for change. This budget delivers on that change. Yeah. Following his opening remarks, Sunak got on to how the Treasury will be reacting to the virus's spread, outlining what the government planned to do to assist businesses and the health service. Firstly, the Chancellor announced a £30 billion stimulus package to assist businesses, fund welfare and the recent changes to sick pay. Whatever extra resources our NHS needs to cope with corona, it will get. So whether it's research for a vaccine, recruiting thousands of returning staff, or supporting our brilliant doctors and nurses, whether it's millions of pounds or billions of pounds, whatever it needs, whatever it costs, we stand behind our NHS. Yeah. That statutory sick pay will be paid from day one. Statutory sick pay will also be available for all those who are advised to self-isolate even if they haven't yet presented with symptoms. And to further support our people, I am also creating a £500 million hardship fund distributed to local authorities who will be able to use that fund to directly support vulnerable people in their local area. That means I am announcing today, in total, a £30 billion fiscal stimulus to support British people, British jobs and British businesses through this moment. I don't want to be too pedantic here, but the £30 billion figure is a classic political trick, along the lines of the Conservatives' nurse claim. In reality, the government is announcing £12 billion worth of spending, which will be added to the £18 billion which was already planned, something which Sunak, to his credit, did note. So, as the Treasury briefing paper puts it, they've set out a £12 billion package of temporary, timely and targeted measures to support public services, individuals and businesses through the economic disruption caused by COVID-19. Regardless of the exact figures, the Chancellor claimed that this spending put the UK ahead of any other economy's spending plans and set the UK up to handle the and cope with its economic impact. Sunak's not wrong that this is a huge spending plan, which really highlights how seriously the government are taking the current outbreak, as well as how severe the impacts may be on the economy. In fact, the scale of the planning tells us quite a lot about how serious the government believes the outbreak will be. That's because these levels of spending and the size of the government's stimulus are pretty similar to what you'd expect leading up to a recession. The government is clearly worried that if the outbreak continues in the UK, then we could be headed towards a recession. And they seem to be hoping that acting now and implementing a stimulus package like this, they'll be able to keep the economy under control. So considering that YouTube hates the coronavirus, let's move on to another topic, taxation. Unlike emergency virus reactions, taxation is a pretty standard feature of budgets, and we got to observe some pretty standard conservative policies. Sunak announced that the national insurance threshold would be increasing from £8,632 to £9,000, a change which would save employees around £100 a year. 
They also announced that the controversial tampon tax would be scrapped, with the 5% tax on sanitary products being removed. In addition to this, he announced that VAT was set to be removed from all books, newspapers, magazines and academic journals from December 1st. When it comes to taxes on fuel, fuel duty will stay frozen for the 10th year running. Also, the duties on spirits, beer, cider and wine will also remain frozen. On the alcoholic note, the business rate discounts offered to pubs will be increased from £1,000 a year to £5,000 in an attempt to help struggling pubs. You might have noticed a lot of reductions and freezes when it comes to tax. So the question is how the government is going to support that. Sunak says that there'll be increased government borrowing, representing 2.1% of GDP this year before rising to 2.4% in 2020-21 and then 2.8% in 2021-22 before decreasing again. This increased level of borrowing raised a few eyebrows in the comments, with former Prime Minister Theresa May even weighing in on the issue. Stopping short of criticising the government's spending plan, she did encourage them not to abandon restraint and caution. So while spending a lot of money may be popular and uh, may seem the natural thing to do, there is of course that necessity of having a realistic assessment of the longer term impact of those decisions, the longer term consequences, and a necessity to ensure that we uh, have that restraint and caution that enables us to make the public finances continue to be strong into the future. Despite increased borrowing, the Chancellor announced that before the impact of growth is forecast to be 1.1% in 2020, 1.8% in 2021, 1.5% in 2022, 1.3% in 2023 and then 1.4% in 2024. Figures which are broadly similar to those recently announced by the Office of Budgetary Responsibility. These growth figures are low though, in fact the lowest since 2009. The projections have already been downgraded from previous releases, and these are still the figures before coronavirus has even been factored in. We're expecting more detailed figures, including the impact of the virus, to emerge soon, but as yet, the government hasn't released any more precise data. When it comes to the environment, Sunak has said that he'll increase taxes on pollution, money which will then be spent on green transport initiatives. There are a number of new measures put in place to tackle the climate crisis. These include a plastic tax, set to be introduced in April 2022, as well as introducing a packaging tax, set to cost businesses £200 per tonne of packaging, which contains less than 30% recycled materials. He also announced a huge tree planting programme, which would see 30,000 hectares of trees planted. This is part of the larger Nature for Climate Fund, which will spend £640 million on protecting natural habitats in the UK. In addition to this, and in reaction to recent flooding, the Chancellor announced that the total government investment in flood defences would be doubled to £52 billion by 2025. Finally, he announced that the government would be abolishing tax relief on red diesel. Red diesel is a cheaper variant of diesel and is typically used by agriculture, refrigeration lorries, trains and off-grid heating. He described the existing system which offered tax relief for those using red diesel as a £2.4 billion tax break for pollution. However, it's worth noting that major industries like agriculture, rail, fishing and domestic heating will be exempt from these changes. A huge part of the budget was made up by the government's so-called levelling up agenda, the investments they want to make. In fact, Sunak even made it clear that while the government is handling the coronavirus issue, they want to put a lot of focus on their levelling up priorities. This is the party trying to come through on their manifesto promises, where they said that they'd improve the lives of those living outside London and in other cities in the UK. And you certainly can't say that they're not spending to make that happen with this budget representing the largest transport and broadband investment in 50 years. So, where's that money going? Well, as I mentioned, the focus has always been outside of London, so it's unsurprising that he's announcing additional funding totalling £640 million in Scotland, £360 million in Wales, and £210 million in Northern Ireland. On top of that, he announced that over 650 Treasury staff members are set to move to an economic campus in the north of England. And in the longer term, over 220 civil servants will move outside of central London. 
Back to infrastructure, Sunak announced that the government will be spending £27 billion on over 4,000 miles of road, as well as spending £5 billion on new gigabit broadband. He also announced that there will be an additional £1.5 billion spent on further education. So, that's what the Chancellor had to say in the budget. Much of the attention was focused on the outbreak, taking time away from the Conservatives' other priorities. Therefore, many are expecting that subsequent budgets will go further to deliver on the Tories' core election promises. One topic which was barely mentioned in the speech was Brexit. However, looking through the documents, Brexit is weaved into many of the details. It's so integral that we'll be putting out another video on this very issue soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when it's released.